Always. Okay, well, welcome. Uh, folks are, are trickling in on this Thursday morning. I'm Amy Loudermilk, the program manager for Arts Build. Um, and you're, if you're with us today, this is um, one of our shared services workshops. It's the, the last Thursday of the month. So that means we're going to be hearing from Colleen Miller, um, our social media expert. Um, so she's got uh, some great content for us today, some videos. Um, so hopefully you're in a place where uh, you can pay attention. Uh, Ms. Flo, I know you're multitasking, um, but we'll, we'll do what we have to. And luckily we're recording this. Um, so if you miss anything, you can go back and rewatch it uh, via our YouTube page. Um, so just a few announcements. Um, in June, we're actually going to be uh, doing a switcheroo with our uh, shared services. Um, no, excuse me. Uh, where, um, so Colleen's going to be with us one month and then we'll hear from HR Biz Solutions the next month, um, just so that we're uh, not over programming everybody. Um, so uh, with that, I don't want to take up any more of Colleen's time, um, but one more thing for security purposes, uh, I am uh, muting or, yeah. I am designating that uh, you cannot unmute yourself um, and you cannot share your screen just to prevent uh, any uh, Zoom bombing that might happen. So if you do have a question for Colleen, please use the, the chat uh, or you can use uh, under the reactions, um, there's an emoji where you can raise your hand um, and I can track that and uh, unmute you so that you can ask your question. So with that, Colleen, I will let you take it away. All righty. Well, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to my April 2021 webinar. It's absolutely crazy to me that we are in April already. Um, if you didn't have a chance to attend my webinar last month, like Amy said, uh, you can be sure to check it out on Arts Build YouTube page. I'm gonna paste the link right there in the chat. Um, we discussed creating a website that works for you um, and your organization or your business. And I really encourage you to check it out. Um, there's a lot of really great information in there. Um, if we have not met yet, uh, my name is Colleen Miller. Uh, I have many years of experience serving in digital and public communication roles for officials of elected office, Chattanooga's Public Works Department, which you're gonna see a lot about today um, in this presentation, uh, many nonprofit organizations involved in democracy and coalition building, um, as well as for multiple private businesses, um, uh, right now including, um, not private, but Arts Build doing this and um, the Hamilton County Sh Sheriff's Office, excuse me, uh, doing some work for them lately. Um, I'm really happy to be here with all of you today and um, every month this year to facilitate every other month, excuse me, starting next next month, uh, to facilitate these webinars where we discuss topics relating to your organization's business or your organization or your business's digital presence, um, including social media, email marketing, website design, and other topics based on your feedback and interest, and I'm really encouraging all of you if, you know, some of my past webinars have not hit some topic that you're interested in, please let Amy know, um, you know, through your email channels or however, if there's something that you're really, really curious about learning or, you know, um, some of the past webinars have been pretty high level. And if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into things, um, please just let us know. So today is my absolute favorite webinar thus far. Um, I like all my work, but this is, this is the nitty gritty of it all and I have a lot of fun with it. Um, so today's topic is content. I'm asked all the time when, when someone asks what I do and they're curious about you know put, putting their business on social media or making their social media better. Um, what do I post about on social media or what do I put in my newsletter, what do I write a blog post about? Um, I get asked it all the time. Um, it's in the top five concerns about starting, you know, a Facebook or Instagram page for business. Aside from how do you do that? It's how do I fill the page? How do I 
engage people every every week, every day, whatever the cadence you have decided on. Um, so if you don't know where to begin creating content for your organization's social media, website, newsletter, that's okay. But really, don't overthink it. Content is literally all around you. That's the title of today's webinar. Your followers are your followers because they're interested in what you're planning, what you're currently working on. They're excited to join the conversation about what you're doing and so much more. They want to learn from you. They want to hear about who you are and what you do, you know, all of it. They're following you because they're interested in you. Don't forget that. Um, in today's webinar, we're going to discuss creating content from what you're already doing you know, make it a habit to capture and share with your followers. That's the hardest part about it. The content is there. It's about making the habit to create that content into usable stuff for social media. Um, it's really interesting. This <laughs> webinar topic should have come to my mind probably a little bit earlier, but it came, came to mind on a recent check-in call with Amy and James and some other wonderful arts field staff. Um, when I was asked the question, what do we, what do we put on our social media? What do we put in our newsletter? Like, is what we're doing working? Um, and I lightheartedly said, but it's very, very true. You know, those Instagram influencers, um, they, that post content about, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking in the chat. Yes, Ruth, they're, um, will be a link, a live link uh, on YouTube for you to be able to watch this later. And I'm sure Amy can share that with you via email. Um, sorry, I lightheartedly said on that call, you know, those Instagram influence, influencers that post content about the breakfast they're eating um, with the intention of possibly like promoting the restaurant, but more likely trying to gain followers so that influencer um, can secure like more sponsorships for various products and items or whatever. It's as simple as translating what the influencers have figured out um, into the content about your businesses and organizations and your digital content. So um, I'm not suggesting that you post pictures of your coffee. I am suggesting to don't think so hard about the content. It's there, you probably have a ton of it and you just have to recreate it and put it in a new form. Um, and it, it can be that easy. So um, we had a whole webinar about Facebook and Instagram and they're owned by the same group, but they are very different. And so right now I just wanted to highlight some of the main differences. You know, Facebook is really for all types of content. You can post, you put links in, in the, um, post, you can attach graphics, you can do video, you can do, you know, use their event feature, which is really nice. Um, they have like poll features, they have conversation sort of pieces. Uh, Facebook is really great. And if you don't have one for your organization, like I've said a million other times, I'm sure all of you are tired of hearing it, you should ha probably have a Facebook business page if you don't. Um, it is the most used, most trafficked, all the things um, type of social media. And it's perfect for all the organizations on this call and many, many organizations. Um, Instagram is really, really photo heavy. Obviously when you're scrolling through the feed, it's mostly photos and the captions are just tiny little captions. Um, it's Important to remember the link limitations on Instagram. Even if you put a link in your photo caption, no one can like, can touch it and click it and go there. So you only have a few available options for that. Um, and the content should be a little bit different, uh, really clean and easy to read, lots of hashtags. Uh, it's just very different, um, but it can be used at the same time, the same posts can live on both places. You just have to edit it a little bit differently if you are posting it to Instagram from, from what you have on Facebook. Uh, I say this every single time because it's extremely important. If you, you know, build, build a brand, your colors, your font, your um, 
you know, about statements, your mission statements, all of that, your brand. It is so much easier to just create content and not, you know, get on Canva if you're on Canva um, and get distracted by all the wonderful colors and layouts and backgrounds and this, that, and the other. Um, if you've, you know, done the work ahead of time to create yourself a brand like I have, um, this is the brand that I use for uh, this webinar series. It's so much easier to just kind of like plug and play and, you know, there's still creativity in, in it when you have a brand and you have colors and fonts, um, but it just makes things happen a lot faster. Um, and it makes everything look cleaner on your social media. You know, if you have a feed, that feed looks the same because you're using the same fonts, you're using the same colors, all the language that you're using is the same. Um, so that's really, really, really important. Uh, obviously the other, other piece is to make sure that everything's grammatically correct, proofread. Um, there's nothing worse. I know that maybe I'm a little more sensitive to it, but when I see something spelled wrong in a social media post, I'm just like, oh man, you can go back and edit it though, but in, in some, some, uh, platforms. So just, you know, make sure everything is visually appealing. That's both colors, fonts, and, you know, readability um, and being grammatically correct. So I repeat this every webinar, but it is worth repeating. So let's talk about, uh, we're going into the different content types. So there's really six sort of categories um, that content can, excuse me, can fit into. So there's uh, the entertainment, there's inspiration, education, conversation, connection, and promotion. So we're just gonna deep dive into each of these. So entertainment, um, <laughs> there's like fun holidays and national holidays. Uh, it's super easy content, especially, you know, national holidays, easy content to create and reuse. Um, you can plan ahead and create your branded graphics for all of the national holidays that you wanna participate in. And it's really, really easy um, content to incorporate into the schedule if you need some, you know, space um, fillers for, for content for a week or whatever. Um, you know, going beyond the national holidays like Memorial Day, Labor Day, Fourth of July, Mother's Day, um, you can join in on the celebration of Black History Month, Women's History Month. There's tons of content availability in the in national holidays and national you know month celebrations so don't forget about those um really easy content to engage people with um and then there's so many so many social media type like national holidays from national pizza day to national dog day to employee appreciation day everyone should probably engage in that if you have multiple employees um there's a calendar that I can share um, that, that uh, shows you all of them. And sometimes there's like 12 a month. <laughs> so there's plenty to participate in if you need some quick, easy content so that you're, con you're staying in people's feeds um, and not losing, losing their attention. So, so many options there. Uh, there's also the daily hashtags to participate in. Um, the ones that I have previously found most useful are Motivation Mondays, Tuesday Tips, and Throwback Thursdays. Um, I'm going to put a list of the most popular that Twitter has seen um, in the last couple of years here in the chat uh, for your review. Um, you know, like Tuesday Tips is great um, to participate in that conversation if you're trying to share some information. Um, you know, Throwback Thursdays allows you to go back in time in case you forgot to post something. Uh, it's something I used to use quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> and then there's, you know, jokes and, and comics, puzzles, contests, giveaways. I personally am a sucker for jokes on social media, only though if they're related to your work and are tasteful and almost like dad jokey. Um, I have to say I've never shared a comic strip on a social media account, but I think it would be really cool to have a team member create one that's, you know, like a 
appropriate for your organization and, and topic based. Uh, I think that would be very fun. Um, just remember anything like this that you shared, chokes, puzzles, contests, giveaways, whatever. Um, it should be related to the message that your organization can stand behind or, you know, it's about work that you do. Unrelated content, like a random Sunday paper comic strip that has nothing to do with anything on, on, in your work uh, is random, a little bizarre. And it's obviously a placeholder more so than just like saying happy Memorial Day. Um, it also shows kind of that you don't know how to create content that your followers are actually interested in seeing from you. So it's a little disingenuous. Um, so just anything that you're doing um, that's in this sort of entertainment realm, make sure that it's relevant. Uh, yeah. Um, the contests and giveaways, this is a, always, always a great one. You know, if you're an organization that can afford to give something away for free, maybe it's two tickets to a show, maybe it's a Tumblr. Um, in Public Works, these umbrellas that we had were really, really um, popular. So we gave them away. One time we gave away, away a rain barrel. Um, sometimes this is a great and effective way to get people involved in your social media that may not hurt you, you know, too, too awful bad in, in the wallet. Um, you know, some of the artists, maybe it's, you know, take it to an event or a piece of artwork that you're willing to exchange for some real active engagement on your social media. So think about if that's an opportunity you're willing to offer. Um, I'm going to just show you some. I, I, 100% um, if you type in uh, this uh, DPW jokes, I'll show you a little later, you will find my past um, <laughs> love of jokes on the social media. So here, that, that tweet um, is just one of, one of the ways I included jokes and, and fun things on uh, Public Works and social media back in, back in the day. Um, so next let's talk about inspiration. Um, you know, these are quotes, personal stories of success, or sometimes, you know, you need your audience to do something and you need to show them why it's important. So, you know, um, Public Works' social media feed was filled with employee um, recognition, uh, no quotes, but quotes are great and appropriate. Again, if they are related to you know, your business, um, or you're trying to chime in on a national conversation that is happening, uh, just make sure you're willing to stand by the message that you're, that you're putting out there. Um, but personal stories of success are always engaged with because you, you know, their family's likely going to engage with it or you, whatever it is. So, um, the personal stories of success is always an easy one. And then, um, like I said, sometimes you need your audience to do something and you need to show them why it's important. So an example could be, you know, when you donate to Arts Build, for example, you're supporting this, that, and the other, and this is, you know, how much money we raised last year, and this is why this is important. You just have to remind them, you have to show them and remind your followers, like, why your work is important um, and inspire them to be a part of it. So um, when I was in public works, uh, we worked as a team to create this bus wrap that is, I believe, still on one of the car to buses that has a, um, a route almost all over the city limits. And um, we pulled facts and, and data from before the uh, bus wrap went into went into commission and then a couple months after and you know shared that things were better and um, notifications to chat 311 like went up for all of the things that we were hoping this bus wrap help this bus wrap helped with so that was inspiring and it was kind of like a hey this is working keep doing it sort of message um, and then you know there were multiple times a year uh, when public works employees volunteered in the community. Um, and so you want to share those moments um, because, you know, it's important. Chattanooga 
although it's a nice medium sized city, it's also a small town and we all help each other out. So it's important to let, let people know that that's something you value as well. Um, so yeah. Education. This is a big one um, for a lot of people. You think, if you think, you know, about it, they, one, the tips and tricks um, is really important, especially if you have an expertise. People want to learn from you. You know, if you're an artist, you have an expertise. If you're um, the theater center, you have expertise in something. People want to know, you know, how you do what you do. Um, so let them know. Or if you need to educate them about something, take the time to do that on social media. Um, you can reuse this content over and over and over. Um, this example on your screen about um, fat, oil, and grease down the drain and why you shouldn't do it is something that will always, always be um, needed to be reminded of uh, for people in the city limits and where they can take it. So it's content that can be reused a lot. and. Um, once you build it, you just, you keep sharing it. You change the message every now and then. Um, but yeah, uh, if you have work product you wanna share or the tips and tricks um, for my work with Women Repair Zone, we shared a lot of like knowledge about um, landscaping and knowledge about tiling and all of the things that Women Repair Zone um, put on events about. Uh, they also want to know that you're educating yourself. So if you're taking a class on safety or you're taking a class to learn a new skill, they want to know, you know, that you're also continuing your education. So um, be sure to take advantage of, of this topic for sure. This is a really fun one. Um, conversation. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done too many of these uh, as far as fill in the blanks and captions, caption this photo, but it's a new fun trend. So I encourage you to try it. I have done in the past questions and polls. So we did a lot of these name that tool um, because part of Women Repair Zone's mission is to teach women how to use tools appropriately um, and, and safely. So we, we did a bunch of these and anytime you can get engagement um, in, on your social media, it's, it's great. Uh, I think we've also, we also did a bunch of polls um, and other types of engagement, asking people questions and hoping they answer them in the comments and then, you know, engaging with them in the comments um, is a very important thing. So be sure to use um, this conversation uh, top like this topic uh, regularly. Then um, there's connection. Uh, behind the scenes information, what you're doing, um, employee or customer features. These are always great content. People like them, people engage with them. They see their face. They share it on their own personal Facebook page or their own Instagram, reshare it. Um, and that creates, you know, just this effect of people engaging with your page that maybe they didn't know existed. Um, yeah, so share about, you know, your organ, take the opportunity to every now and then to remind people what your organization is about, your staff, your mission, your vision, your value statement, if you have them. Um, that is content, again, that once you create it, it can be reshared multiple times um, and it, it can just be a, a constant repeat, um, not constant, but every couple of months, re remind people uh, what, what you're doing and why you're, why you're relevant. Um, this sharing content uh, from other businesses and organizations is something I wanna talk about a little bit more. Um, it's really beneficial when you can tag uh, another business in your social media posts. Um, they have an audience that maybe your page doesn't and that gets your message and your Facebook pages or Instagram page um, name in 
the feed of somebody of someone who may not know your page exists but wants to know your page your page exists so anytime you have that opportunity i encourage you to do it um we and public works tried really hard to make sure that when that was an opportunity i did it um because not a lot of people you know it's it's a public works page um although people are interested in it the level of interest is a little lower than other things. Um, we're not hosting like fun events for people to pay to attend like Chattanooga Theater Center or Arts Build and we're not selling beautiful artwork like some of you, um, you know. So any opportunity um, I had to tag someone else and get it on their feed as well, I took that opportunity. So this first one that you see on your screen, um, we had, a, con a, a local um, convention come and at the convention there's a equipment rodeo where um, our team members participated in these contests to uh, you know show off their skills on all the big equipment. Um, I'm going to show you a video in a second um, and it was actually very exciting obviously the gentleman at this and that, he loved it. Um, and the feed kept going on and on and on on Twitter all day. Um, there was so much engagement, I wasn't expecting it, but um, we showed off uh, our team member skills and people loved it. And um, it, uh, it became a um, regular, regular thing every year because the convention, although that year it was in Chattanooga, um, it moved around the state to Knoxville and Memphis and Nashville as well. And then there was a national one. Um, every year, every time it came up, uh, the news called and, and wanted to do multiple pieces on it and people really enjoyed watching it on social media. So I did a ton of videos, a ton of, you know, social about, about our team members and who they were and how long they've, you know, served at the city. So it's, it's sometimes you work to have a moment and it creates multiple other moments for you um, on social media. Uh, these other two screenshots are sort of behind the scenes um, and employee sort of features. People, you know, they wanna know what you do. Even in public works, they wanna know that their roads are getting repaired, they're fixing water drainage issues um, and you have the expertise to do it. So again, share there's content all over so just you just got to think about it and you have to make sure you take pictures obviously um a tweet or a facebook post or an instagram post without photos it does does doesn't do any good so i'm gonna um i'm gonna play this video because it's really fun to watch and like i said this one um appearance on this and that created like a firestorm afterwards and every single year after that um, that I wasn't expecting but was great content um, because it showed you know our equipment operators skills um, and it's just kind of a fun thing to watch so I thought I would share it with all of you and you please let me know in the chat if you cannot hear it I have my computer sound all the way up just outside the new Channel 9 studio, right off of 153. And I'm here with Justin Holland. He's the administrator with the Public Works uh, Department in the great city of Chattanooga. Good seeing you, Justin. Thanks for having us today. I'm ex extremely excited about this interview because this backhoe behind me, I'm going to take it for a little spin after the show, right? You're going to redecorate the front lawn here. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to mark it off my bucket list. No, a lot of folks are excited, especially in your department, uh, that it's uh, National Public Works week now when does this start so it starts next week so we'll have a couple of events most of the events highlight our employees and the great work that they do to support the infrastructure in our city and provide essential city services um, like wastewater um, garbage collection recycle collection repairing roads and sidewalks and um, so we're excited about all the work that our employees do and it's a uh, this is a great week that we take to celebrate their work how many men and women work under your 
We have about 730 people who provide all of those types of services, including parks and golf courses and um, roads. And so there's a, there's a, so many services that we provide. Uh, we, we maintain the city's fleet of uh, police cars and fire trucks and all of our own equipment. Okay, so, so uh, I'm excited about this back home, and I did not know about the uh, public works rodeo. Yeah. That there's a, there's a, you know, with a city level, there's a state level. Now, Kevin, one of our operators, uh, he is going to be competing in this rodeo. Where's this rodeo going to take place? So every year it takes place at the First Tennessee Pavilion. That's our local equipment rodeo. We have anywhere from 30, 40 equipment operators who operate everything for garbage trucks, uh, uh, skid steers, backhoes, uh, the brush collector, and they do their timed events. So most of the events are timed and the operators here compete for uh, awards and uh, recognition and then uh, top award for winners go to uh, the state level. And Kevin recently uh, participated last August in a national equipment rodeo in Kansas City. So he was the uh, finalist and only two people from each state attend that. And uh, so he, he's a, an excellent operator. Okay, well, let's uh, see Kevin White in action with the city. Yeah, so, we'll, so what, what, are we, uh, what are we looking at Kevin doing right now? I see a bucket and I see a rain. So Kevin's, Kevin's operating a, a backhoe. There's a chain with a, um, a hook there. He's got a ring on a piece of uh, iron that's in sand. Look at that. He's lifting it out of that. He's got to attach that quickly. He's got to quickly get it over to this piece of uh, PVC pipe. He very carefully is going to lift it up into the PVC pipe. He's almost there. It takes this is this is really really hard to do. Well, uh, it is hard to do. He's making it look easy. What? So he's, he's there, making... and then he puts the back on the ground. His best time is around 24 seconds, and that might have been one of his better times I've ever seen that happen. Okay, wait, wait. First of all, did anybody? We, we've got several <laughs> public works officials like behind. I'm just gonna pause that video. Um, I would like to say just for um background i have tried that um test or you know event and it took me 15 minutes to figure it out and i gave up i didn't i don't even think i got the thing in there but they were very kind to let me attempt that um so you know this is kind of a it's a moment that's you know really important to um the the staff in public works the team members in public works um and it's it's a fun thing, uh, you know. It took a lot to get um, our team to show that and do it on live. It was live, um, but you know, it it really did. It was a moment that created multiple other moments for us, and it's content that you know just exploded and had 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 some fun with it. Um, so let's talk about promotion next. Um, client testimonials, uh, product or service reviews, um, webinars, events, products, discounts, services, all of the things. Um, anytime someone reviews, you know, your, your work on, on Google or Facebook, you can, you know, move, move them between the um, platforms, bring a Google review over here um, to Facebook and, and Instagram and make a graphic of it. Uh, and, sh and share it. That's a great content to, to use. Um, you know, if someone reviews one of your um, pieces of art or a show or, you know, some other event and says they had a great time, be sure to share that. Facebook makes that very easy. Um, if you have the option for um, your followers to leave you a review, you can just click share and share it on your feed. Um, uh, I like to take a moment and make it into a graphic that just looks on brand and um, can be shared over on Instagram as well. So anytime you have that option, uh, someone does that, be sure to, to share it um, in, in some form or fashion. Uh, you know, if you're hosting webinars, obviously right now, I think I'm on Facebook Live for Arts Build. Um, if you're hosting conversations, be sure to, to put that on your feed. Um, obviously, if you're hosting events, um, make it a Facebook event uh, to capture people who are interested. Um, that is a great way to increase your, your followers um, because 
uh, one of your events could be served in someone's feed that isn't necessarily following or liking your page. Um, so anytime you have the opportunity to make something an event on your Facebook page, do so. And, and you can create a plethora of graphics and, and content just from a single event, um, depending on you know, the timeline of when it's happening. And that is a constant piece of content, content that, that lives in your feed and can be on your Instagram feed as well. Um, you know, if you're selling something, obviously that should be content. Um, you know, if you're host, if you're having like a discount um, for Women Repair Zone every Mother's Day, um, there's a Mother's Mother's Day discount. Uh, and then, of course, be sure to share your services. Um, these are two examples of uh, some client testimonials of Women Repair Zones classes. I, like I said, I personally like to turn them into um, graphics because again, they can be reused, um, not too close together, but kind of far apart. You can always reuse them. Um, these are some examples of some ones from Public Works. Public Works was a little difficult because not every review on Facebook is positive, which is okay. That's the point of the reviews. Um, but anytime we had a positive you know, review that came in, it, usually through 311's service, um, we made sure to take a photo and, and share it. Um, there's always, they, as you can see in probably the bottom of your screen, that one was liked and commented by a lot of people for our Public Works page. So um, anytime you have the opportunity to do that, be sure to be sure to do that. Okay. So um, this is a little graph from Sprout Social uh, about the types of content uh, and actions on social media that prompt consumers to purchase that may not be purchasing, may not be you know, appropriate or applicable, but um, it's still extremely worth noting because um, these are the actions that you as an organization or an individual or business can take on um, social media that really create positive reactions. So the first one I really want to talk about because we've on some other uh, other webinars, this has been brought up, like how do you do you answer um, reviews? Do you comment back on comments with questions? How important is that? It's extremely important. Um, even if someone leaves you a bad review, it's important to address it publicly in a positive way um, to show that you hear them and you're human and you acknowledge that they're human um, and maybe you can work something out and figure out something that you need to know. Um, so always be responsive. If someone comments, even like, this is great, thank them for their comment because even nowadays it takes time to stop and do that instead of just keep scrolling through your feed. So um, engage with their engagement and it really creates positive results. Um, offer promotions, people go on Facebook now to find um, two for one deals or uh, if you like and comment on this post or leave us a review, you'll get 10% off or a free ticket or something. People, that is great engagement. And again, if you can offer something like that every now and then, I would say do it. Um, providing educational content, that is uh, pretty high up there as um, an important action to take on your social media. People are, like I said at the beginning, and I wrote up for the thing about this webinar today, people are your followers. They're your followers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is because they're interested in what you're doing. So that educational content can be about you, about your organization, about your staff, about what you're doing. It's a very wide, wide range of educational content. Um, obviously photos play a really important part, uh, sharing interesting, interesting visuals, infographics for needed information. And then I personally took the being funny um, pretty seriously when I was at Public Works and put a lot of jokes together. Um, and then, you know, the bottom ones are extremely important to exclusive content. Again, people want to know that you're, that they're, they're following you for 
for a purpose to hear what you have to say. Um, and sometimes that exclusive content is, you know, those promotions. So that's kind of twofold. Um, the behind the scenes content, you know, what you're doing, why you're doing it. Um, trash talking competitive brands. I don't really feel like that's an important one. I don't think anyone should really do that. Everyone, um, it doesn't create positive, positive reactions, which I think is the purpose of showing you that. Um, really important about content is to mix and match. Um, we're about to jump into summer and, you know, while the, the title of this slide makes me think about mix and match bathing suits, you can also mix and match different types of content. Um, you know, sometimes I paired a joke with um, an update on content. Uh, I, that's just because I got a little tired of posting the plain old updates. Hey, we paved this road today. Um, and although that's really, really great content and people want to know about it, um, I usually just try to mix it up and put a joke in there. Um, there's tons of ways to, to mix and match your content. And also, you know, get creative. Here's, here's some, um, actually, here's some examples. I, I told you I really enjoy um, jokes. Um, and thankfully public works and my team members played along and let it happen. Um, one thing I wanna hone on right really quick is these hashtags at the bottom of the screen, hashtag DPW jokes and hashtag Cha public works. If you put either of those into Instagram or um, mostly Facebook and Twitter, you will see all, all of the tweets from my from my work and you know hopefully the current work on the public works Twitter and, and Facebook um, these are what I like to call like tracking hashtags makes life really easy for a person like me when I'm like oh I want to put this tweet um, in a video at the end of the year or in a presentation for you all to look at uh, these are are really helpful because you know, you're create not only creating a brand this way, so that if people are like, I want to go see but public works, it, you know, is up to, they can just put in the hashtag and have a tracking hashtag. It's not necessarily for the audience. Um, it's mostly for internal, but you should always have hashtags in there and you should always have an organizational hashtag, whatever it is. So for arts build, you know, I would suggest putting hashtag Cha Arts Build or you know some Chattanooga reference in your hashtag so that you can track your hashtags pretty easy instead of scrolling through your um, <laughs> past posts forever on Facebook to find something. It just makes life a lot easier. So if you can, always use related hashtags or create your own hashtag. Um, be sure to make sure no one has used it prior um, in any any other way before you do it. Thankfully. The DPW jokes and child public works um, were not taken. So, um, yeah. So get hey, Colleen. Oh, my, my volume is all the way up. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Miss Flo had a question. Uh, oh. It's in the chat. It's about uh, her husband making a post about Amazon and uh, having to remove the word Amazon for Facebook to accept the post. Can you talk a little great. bit about that? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, you'll find that that is true um, with those sort of, you know, Amazon, Lowe's, Google, whatever it is, um, and like music. I'm sure we've all had to deal at, at some point, possibly, you know, a video not uploading because you didn't have the rights to the music in the background that's happened to me quite a bit. Um, as far as other words that it's now blocking off the top of my head, I would make assumptions that, you know, like the general brand names, unless it's a positive post. I'm very curious, I referenced Amazon in the video. I will have to do some research and, you know, um, that one is very interesting. Uh, so he referenced it in the video, but didn't like tag Amazon in the, the post content. And 
I'm, that, I'm asking that just for clarification. Huh. Yeah. So I, um, off the top of my, oh yeah, let's hear it. Uh, she muted me. So the question I had, no, he, he unboxed the book that he got that his sister wrote from Amazon. And so he just unboxed it and said, you know, hey, buy it on Amazon. It's, it's a great book. And it was just a cute little video that he posted and it wouldn't let him post for a that long time. Sad. And so, yeah, it's, it was really weird. And then, um, and then when he redid it again and he didn't mention Amazon, the exact same video, just no Amazon mention they allowed him to, to post it right away. And I'm just wondering, you know, um, Apple just up, up um, they, they just posted an update that I think allows um, users to block Facebook ads or something, ad tracking or whatever. And, you know, there's a lot of Amazon ads on Facebook. And so I'm just wondering if, they, if they're starting to kind of use those words, um, you know, to keep people from, promoting Amazon on their own feed. Yeah. I mean, we weren't, there was no link or anything like that. It was just go, go buy this book on Amazon. It's, you know, here's the name of it. It's called <laughs> The Sometimes Sister. <laughs> that is so interesting. Um, I've never had that happen. I've only had that happen, you know, with me not owning the rights to music in the background yeah. and some other like more political side of, you know, ads getting rejected, but that's names or whatever, all those very things. Very interesting. I'm going to look into that and um, do some reading because I know, you know, Facebook and everyone updates their stuff all the time and they're not very great about um, fully explaining it. So I will connect with Amy and get your email address or you can put your email in the chat if you're comfortable um, oh, yeah. and just let you know. I'll do some research for you and for yeah. me. It'll be twofold. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, get creative and repurpose content. Like I've said, I uh, said a little while ago, um, you know, you can do a year in review video with, you know, at the end of the year with all your, with, you know, appropriate content you want to reshare and lift, lift back up. Um, I'm sure, you know, a lot of you have year end um, reports that you can you can share and turn into content. I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, this next little short clip I'm going to show you. Uh, I didn't know I was going to be on Facebook Live today, but it's super embarrassing. Um, a couple of years ago, I was selected uh, to lead an hour long session at the National Public Works Conference in Seattle. Um, and I knew I would need a break, much like today, from talking to, and to catch my breath. So I recorded myself singing a song to a video of some scrolling content. I'm going to play it for you now. And I'm thankful that you're um, forcefully muted because you can keep your laughter to yourself. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, we'll just, we'll do this. This is an example of some get creative and repurpose content and also embarrassing of customer service the department gave to me one wastewater treatment plant two fleet maintenance garages three dog parks four trail systems five recycle centers six surveyor surveying seven water sport launches eight watersheds nine prime tanks ten licensed engineers eleven bioretention basins and twelve leaf trucks to pick up your leaves you're welcome for that content um this is, you know, one of the ways I tried to get creative and do something a little different at the end of the year. Um, I'm all about puns and jokes and redoing words to classic songs for fun to show content. Um, you know, it shows your followers that you want to engage them and therefore they will be <laughs> engaged. I'm glad you love it. That was very embarrassing. Um, but fun uh, and you know, it was important to put the song behind it so you knew what I was trying to do. Um, but this is just a very small example of repurposing work uh, throughout the year that you can you know, keep and use for, for other moments. So some uh, final thoughts. Uh, 
use the tracking hashtags or multiple hashtags, you know, if they're appropriate. Um, join the conversation, you know, in your city. Chattanooga is a, is a hashtag all the time. Um, make your posts short and simple. Um, include links when you can, you know, if you're trying to get people to sign up on your website for something like a newsletter or you're trying to get them to buy a ticket to an event, share a link whenever you can or read an article or read a blog post. Um, it's always great, but also remember the restrictions, um, especially on Instagram for links. Always, always, always have a photo or graphic. Um, graphics are especially useful when you have too much information to share in a, in a post, you can make it a graphic. Um, and again, if another organization is involved in something or that's in that post, be sure to tag their social media. Again, they have an audience that you may not, and it's free and an easy way to cross post information and gain more followers to your page, which is all, the ultimate goal. Um, so we covered a lot and I am looking forward uh, to the next webinar. And if you're interested in asking me some offline questions, talking or working with me, um, I have a lot of you know side contracts and I love to help get, get people started with creating content. Um, sometimes you just need a little help in the, in the, in the beginning and you kind of roll into it. Um, whether it's you know need help with creating a brand, and a few graphics to get you get you started or sit down and talk about some ideas. Um, I'm happy to to work with you. And you can also email Amy and she knows how to also get in touch with me. But my email is in the chat. Um, does anybody have any questions that we talked about today? We talked about a lot of content. Um, it's definitely worth probably rewatching, especially for my singing video. I'm sure you all want to watch that again. Um, but yeah, any questions in the last eight minutes? And if you raise your hand or, I don't think you can unmute yourselves right now. No, I can do that. And um, I'm sorry, there's a lag for me. So I've turned my camera off, um, but any questions? Anything in the chat? I'm sure there may be questions when people uh, go back and rewatch the video. <laughs> I hope so. There's a lot there, but that's the point. You have a ton of content to work with. Um, you if you produce, you know, writing or, you know, end of the year reports or mid year reports or reports to your board throughout the year, if that's, you know, a thing for your organization, um, there's content definitely. All right, well, if there's no questions, then um, I guess everybody can uh, get about four minutes of their day back to go get a cup of coffee or take a quick break. But thanks everybody for joining us. Um, again, all of Colleen's videos on, uh, on uh, social media, excuse me, uh, are posted to Artsbuild's Facebook page. Feel free to reach out to me um, at amy at artsbuild.com. Um, I'm sure you all are getting my emails. That's that's how you got the link to this programming. So uh, thanks again, and everybody have a great weekend. Thanks, Thank Colleen. You. Thank you, everybody.